name is Marina, and I will be sharing with you some of the insights uh, into the trends of philanthropic trends in Croatia. But this is more meant just like one example of what issues we have when it comes to data management in terms of managing money and managing audiences and our supporters. So just to start off with, I think it's very important that we always, I know it is very boring and very, how to say, uh, school uh, oriented, but it's important to know what we are talking about. Because very often in different type of research or philanthropy, we have different subject matter. Because it depends whether we consider philanthropy also different public uh, public giving, public institutions engagement in types of investment, social investments that go well beyond what is uh, regulated or just like standard public policy scope. But just for the sake of our common understanding, we are talking about voluntary investments into the well-being of communities, starting from individuals to communities, to organizations, to policy areas or problem areas, but no matter whom we support, even if you support an individual, there is a ripple effect because communities are always affected. Uh, so the second thing that I think uh, for coming from where I'm coming from, Solidarna Foundation is uh, an experiment, a strategic experiment of human rights sector in Croatia. We set up a foundation in late December 2015 to test whether there are 10,000 citizens in Croatia ready to support human rights causes because it has been a very ignored area with a lot of fear and anxiety among people who are working on difficult causes fearing that if they step out and expose themselves towards the public, they will not get uh, respect, but they will get contempt. Or we'll, there was a lot of insecurity around private philanthropy or philanthropic effort for the sake of human rights. So talking about human rights philanthropy or philanthropy for human rights, uh, we do see that there are various benefits of uh, recruiting uh, and uh, re mobilizing resources from private uh, sources because they do really contribute to autonomy and legitimacy. I think those two are the most important ones, legitimacy and autonomy of human rights work. And, they are, and uh, th this is very useful money because it is usually not restricted money, it's faster money, but it is not the source that can uh, comp uh, how to say it cannot completely uh, cover or uh, co compensate for the public funding. So when we talk about human rights work, it's very important to know that this is always one part of the bigger pie and that it's very important on the other hand uh, to make sure that we know that we do not get in a way seduced by the money that can be easily Fundraise. This is happening to us in Solidarna because what we are doing, we are combining humanitarian and human rights work. And when we do the clever mix of both, we manage to draw audiences that otherwise no, would not directly fund human rights work. But if we explain if building a house for somebody who lost it in the earthquake and the government did not build that house and we are stepping in, but then we are communicating and advocating for the government to step up its efforts. Efforts, then we are doing a happy, how to say, marriage between humanitarian, compensatory work in terms of what the government is not doing, and pushing the government to take responsibility. But there are many traps around it. And there are also traps when it comes to including, engaging, broadening your audiences, and especially trying to engage corporations. We're always also dancing. You have a dance to dance. Make sure you're not co-opted that you are kind of educating them as much as helping them feel that they can identify with the right cause. So when it comes to research and understanding, uh, understanding philanthropy, I think it's very important to also consider through different types of research to keep an eye on the motives and the rewards, the dynamics of philanthropic motivation to give and reasons why people give, which also differ very much depending on the context, depending on culture, and depending on specific situational needs. 
Uh, so, for instance, in underdeveloped markets, uh, economically underdeveloped markets, where you have the majority of population that is not using their wallet to make a statement, but is using their wallet to survive, and that means they are going to be shopping in Zabka or in Zabac in Croatia. We just realized that it's the same shop, probably. So, like going for the cheapest food and compromising your values, that's like normal in countries where people don't earn enough money. So you really have to uh, be, uh, how to say, aware of, uh, of the motivations and the rewards. And these are things that can be covered if you are monitoring what you are doing. And if you are aware of these topics, then you can try to integrate it into your feedback, uh, feedback that you are getting from the donors and are trying to see what is motivating people to give. Uh, these are some of the, uh, you are very familiar with all of this, but I would say that uh, when we are following and mapping philanthropic trends, uh, there are certain features uh, of uh, philanthropic giving that should, we should keep an eye on, like certain categories that are important for the sake of understanding what the dynamics is. Uh, crisis versus development oriented philanthropy is actually one of the biggest issues, like the biggest differences or the most distinctive features of philanthropy when it comes to Croatia. There is a very clear gap and difference between two types of giving. Um, so, uh, talking about uh, global philanthropic trends, that there are many of them, but those that resonate, I would say, with our very small country, very small society, which is just catching up with uh, philanthropy, uh, uh, the whole, we are living in an age of increased, uh, how to say, now constant uncertainty. As uncertainty becomes bigger, as people feel less safe, there is a greater impetus to do something about safety. And uh, also the, the awareness that the solutions to social problems that are out there are not adequate enough. So it is not uh, surprising that uh, so crisis response and social innovation uh, are two areas where philanthropy is getting a lot of uh, dynamism. Uh, what uh, we can also see, and this is what happens uh, when a uh, crisis uh, hit, is that there is a greater impetus. This has been proved in Croatia through different types of research, but also globally. There is greater impetus to get out of your comfort zone or your ego position and to join others. So massive drives. Uh, blurring boundaries between who is the big corporate foundation guy who was the first one, you know, or like this kind of getting relaxed about working with others and accumulating money and channeling it in the same direction is, I would say, one of the biggest positive things that is coming out of the times of uncertainty. Uh, also, uh, which is a good thing for us, is that, I mean, talking about us, I'm talking about grassroots, uh, uh, like those uh, funders that were born out of communities and are seeing themselves somewhere in between the big ones and the small ones. And that is that participatory approaches to grant making are becoming much more prominent, not only for the sake of being democratic, inclusive, and nice, and diverse, and everything else, which is like, thank God, becoming a part of the buzz and part of the CSR uh, discourse, which is becoming politically correct, which is great for us. But not only because of that, but because it is more efficient, it's more cost effective, it is uh, shortening time for doing additional studies and research, if you're engaging those people that know what's going on in inclusive participants, oh my God, only five minutes. Okay, so what I wanted to say, I'm just, I, I just wanted to uh, refer also to the same research that you just mentioned. Uh, so, uh, this research that was conducted in seven countries, uh, yes, the methodology here is a little bit questionable because primarily it was completely focused on online, digital, 
as soon as you have exclusively online sources of interaction, you can make sure that you are not addressing the digital gap in your countries and that many people that are donating are not covered and you are just getting actually the trends that are related to digitally literate people, higher, more highly educated, which also means with greater income. That means that you are gonna get over higher results, more optimistic than they really are. But I would say the answer to your question, there is no one methodology and we will never have it. And our governments are never going to get their statistics offices in order. So the best approach is what I like is triangulation, using different sources, uh, approaching them critically, and then adjusting for methodological error that you know that is there. So you look at different sources and you the interpretation trying to look for some middle ground, and you use also your own knowledge about how to interpret. But positive thing that we mentioned with Ukraine is that no matter how, we can see that almost every second citizen of uh, Central and Eastern Europe has supported uh, Ukrainian, uh, Ukrainian people in one or another way. Uh, what is interesting here that the average amount of donations is 80 euro for the whole region. For Croatia, here it is put uh, rather high. It is much higher here than what we have from our research and from our practice. So we know that this is higher than what we thought. One piece of research where we took part in, and I would uh, maybe uh, say that it is an interesting methodological approach, is Catalyst Balkans. It is a Belgrade-based regional organization that is uh, specializing in philanthropy trends. What they are doing, and we participated, I mean, I was working on the research for Croatia on their report with the colleague, is that they are focusing on media coverage. They are using the media coverage of philanthropy as their source. So this is the analysis of what philanthropy looks like in the media. But because they have a very good database of media, in Croatia they are covering close to 1,000 different media outlets, then you can say, and today in our mediated culture, what is out there in the media exists. And we know how important media are for fundraising, because that's how we are reaching others. So I would say that this research, with the disclaimer that this is the media representation of philanthropy, is rather interesting and rather uh, and rather, how to say, at least methodologically clean. They are not pretending to be something they are not. You can see the trends in Croatia, and you can see how the crisis has catapulted uh, philanthropy in Croatia. Mind you, Croatia is very, very, very underdeveloped. Very underdeveloped, I want to highlight that. For us, Slovakia is a role model, Czechia is a role model, Poland is really, I mean, to be honest, yes, but you can see what has happened, okay? Uh, and what is interesting here is that uh, because Croatia didn't only have a pandemic, we had two earthquakes in 2020. Mm -hmm. So the more crises and the more intense they are, <laughs> the more <laughs> fundraising you get, you know? And you can see that Croatia has a very uh, asymmetric, very uh, diverse regional uh, capacities when it comes to uh, fundraising and when it comes to where the money is going. The most interesting finding that we got from this research is that we took the information of the number of instances of donations and the amounts given and directed towards local communities. And then we compared it to the statistical data on regional development index and came up with something very enlightening that the least developed regions in Croatia managed to absorb the lowest amount of money. And it is the same kind of reproduction of development paradox, which is happening with the EU funds. Look at which countries in the EU are absorbing the most of, let's say, agricultural budget development. So the big issue is, if we go back to Martia Sen and the idea of development as the, de the development means on our capacities to develop, that indeed means that we need to invest into the capacities of those that did need the money most so that they can fetch the money. And I will have to finish now because I overdid it. You can learn more if you scan this barcode. <laughs>